Now this video is to revise the topic of energy. Energy makes changes and movement possible in everyday life. Man uses various forms of energy for many different purposes. Man is not the only animal that needs energy. All living things need energy. They obtain energy and use energy to carry out life processes such as growing, reproduction, responding to changes, breathing. Um, all these things are life processes. Understanding this theme, theme is called energy, right? Will allow students to appreciate the importance and the uses of energy and the need to conserve energy. Recognize that an object can be seen when now there are various forms of energy. In P4, you learn about light and heat energy. So under light energy, you learn that light energy is important because it helps us to see. How do we see? When light is reflected off an object, we can see things. The picture that is often shown, for example, will be an eyeball like this, eyelashes, eye. You see an object, maybe the object is a book, okay. And then there's a light saw somewhere, you see a lamp. So an arrow here represents light rays. And they're always straight lines and arrows. This arrow means light is shining onto the book. And then uh, one of the light rays is reflected into the person's eye, straight line, yeah? And then the person can see the book because of this. That is how you understand this. So how will we test you in this? We can test you things on how light can um, help to form shadows of different shapes, sizes, depending on the position of the objects from the light source, from the screen. We will test you things like distance between the light source object and the object and the screen. So what do you mean? There will be a light source, for example, this could be a torch light. This is a floor, this is an object, this is a screen. They test you things like distance between the light source and object, distance between the object and the screen. And how shifting this and changing, changing these distances will change the size of the shadows. Okay. Now, you will not be using terms, you will not see terms like transparent, translucent, opaque. All you need to tell us is this means let most light pass through. Or when we use this, we are referring to transparent object. Translucent means let some light pass through. And opaque means do not let any light right, passing through it. Now, can you use these terms? You can. All right? But we will not use these terms when we test you. So which of the following is not a source of light? So you have learned that moon is bright, but it's because it reflects the light. So this is not a source of light. Source means it gives out light, not it reflects. Huh? Sun gives out light. Fire gives out light. A star, a sun is a star. Okay, so this gives out light. So which one is not a source of light? Be very careful and see words like this. We're asking you for things that are wrong. Huh? This will answer be moon. Now here comes the... Light source, object, and screen. So, which of the following will show the shadow of the wooden container on the screen? So, if you look at the side here, right, this is a wooden container, it looks like a cylinder. Now, you will not get this shadow. This is if you shine a torch from the top, then you'll get this shadow. This is wrong. There's no cone shape here. If this object is like this, alright, then you will form this shadow, a triangular shadow. But it's not, so you will not get this. You will not get this either. If the object here is like this, oval shape, and you shine from the top, then you get a shadow like this at the bottom. So it's not this. At the side, it will be a rectangular shape. Okay, a rectangular shape from the side. So three is the answer. This was a common, this was a question test in PSI before, something similar. Every time the person, Jenny, right, moves. So Jenny stood at point A and saw her own shadow. How is the shadow form? So she's an object, right? Light will shine to her, shine to her, shine to her, shine to her. Can light pass through her? No. Can the light pass over her? Yes. Right? Did the light pass over her? Yes. Alright? So here, no shadow. Huh? But here, she blocks light from shadow. All the part that she blocks, right? Whenever she blocks light, a shadow is formed. So this is the length of her shadow when she's at position A. So this will be at, I don't know how many meters. Now, if she were to stand here, Directly beneath, uh, so 
So we're going to just draw her in a very simple way. Light will form, well, she'll block light like this, but this light will pass through here, light will pass by her. So the shadow that she forms is a very small shadow. So as she walks nearer and nearer to the light source, the shadow becomes smaller and smaller or shorter and shorter. Then she starts to walk further away again. Then her shadow becomes longer again. See, block light, blocks light, blocks light, and her shadow will be this long. So if I show you on the graph, alright, her shadow will be long at first, at this point. Then as she walks nearer to the light source, it becomes shorter and shorter and shorter. You walk further, it becomes longer and longer and longer. If this is the length of shadow, and this is the distance, let's say at A, this is at C, this could be at E. Just to show you how it can be tested in a graph form. So which of the following best show the length of Janice's shadow at the different positions? So A and E, I expect C to be the shortest. So that's the first clue. Huh? C is the shortest. 0 0.5, shorter than 4, shorter than 4. Definitely is correct. It is almost 1 is correct. Okay, let's check the rest. This is less than this, but this is more than this. You are saying that standing here will cast a shadow longer than standing here. This is wrong. Again, this is more than this. This is wrong. Right? This is more than this. It's wrong also. Answer is 1. Another form of energy is called heat energy. You've got to know some common sources of heat. You've got to know the difference between temperature and heat. Temperature is the measurement of how hot or cold something is. Or you can say in a more scientific term, measurement of its degree of hotness. So you must differentiate between heat and temperature. Don't use them interchangeably. Yeah? Temperature is just a number that tells you whether something is hot or cold. Heat is a form of energy. So these are the two differences that you must be very clear. Don't mix them up. So a very common mixing up is this. Some of you will say that the temperature is hotter. I cringe every time you see this. Now this is wrong. Huh? You can say that the temperature is higher. The number can be higher. But for example, 45 degrees Celsius is higher than 30 degrees Celsius. A temperature cannot be hotter. Temperature can be higher, temperature can be lower. you got to show that heat can travel from a place of higher temperature to a place of lower temperature, or a place of hotter place to a cooler place, until both places reaches the same temperature. What this means is, for example, you have a glass of hot Milo at 90 degrees Celsius. You place it in a room, and the room temperature is at 30 degrees Celsius. It's a table. So after maybe two hours, all right, this will, all, will go to 30 degrees Celsius, no longer at 90 degrees Celsius. It will not remain hot because the heat will be continuously conducted to the environment until the temperature drops to the surrounding temperature. And you've got to know the idea of heat gain and heat loss. It's always flowing from higher temperature to lower temperature. Think like a waterfall, huh? higher temperature, lower temperature, hotter place, cooler place all right heat always flows in this direction never in the opposite direction how can we test you we can test you using questions with thermometer with, with data loggers let's try some questions now which is a all our sources of heat fire yes sun yes sweater no you feel hot when you wear a sweater but that's not because it is a heat source it's just because this is a poor conductor of heat your heat from your body finds it harder to leave your body, all right, and it's all, um, and the air that's trapped in the sweater helps to slow down heat loss from your body. That's why you feel hot. So answer is A and B only. Yeah, it's three. Thermometer. Remember, measure temperature using thermometer. The loggers temperature heat sensor. Then okay, a question using thermometer. You know how to read seventy. 80, right? So the longer one sends for like 0, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is 71. 70, 70 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this one looks like 71, 2, 3, 74. So what's the reading on the thermometer? 
74 and that would be wrong because you forgot to write the units 24 degrees that will also be wrong because degrees will be angles 24 degrees Celsius then that will be correct if you don't write your units you will be penalized either zero or half mark depending on how we allocate the answer key at that point in time but definitely you will be penalized what will happen to the temperature if the thermometer is left on the table for 10 minutes the temperature will drop or decrease because room temperature right room temperature is roughly 30 degrees celsius and this is the uh, water here definitely is a higher temperature at 74 degrees celsius so heat flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature so after some time temperature definitely will keep dropping you must also know the effects of heat gain and heat loss when something gains heat it will expand Coming loose heat, you will contract. And of course, when something gains heat, it can also change in the state, like from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. When something loses heat, it can change from liquid, uh, gas to liquid, liquid to solid. And identify good and poor conductors of heat. Let's take a look. So Iman tried to separate two cups that are stuck together. Which of the following should he try? So you put hot water inside, the cup inside will expand. You put crush ice touching the, the cup outside, the cup outside will contract. That will squeeze these two cups together very tightly. It doesn't help him to separate them. Put hot water outside. Good, it helps to expand the cup outside. But also put hot water inside. The cup inside will also expand. It doesn't help to separate them. This one, put crush ice outside. It will contract. Contract means it will become smaller. Contract the cup outside, that will squeeze and grip onto this tightly. Doesn't work. Let's try this. Hot water that touches the cup outside, it will become larger because it expands. Ice is inside touching this, so the cup will lose heat. When it loses heat, it will contract. It will become smaller. Then there's a gap. Then it loosens up. You can then remove the cup inside. Okay, four is the answer. So there's a gold, gold is metal, and around metal rod, a gold ring here. Joe is supposed to remove the gold ring, which is stuck around here. So the idea is he must make the gold ring bigger, or make the metal rod smaller. So this one must be contract. Must make this one contract, and make this one expand. To contract this, this must be cooled. So it must lose heat. To expand, it has to be heated up. So it has to gain heat. So let's try it. Which one fits the, the understanding here? Put the gold ring and metal rock into the container of ice? No. They must have two different treatment. Put part of the metal rock in boiling water. No, we don't want it to do this. Because boiling water means it gains heat. Put metal rock in ice. Ice means lose heat, cool down. Four seems to be correct. Put gold ring, put the metal rod into hot water. Then the hot metal rod will gain heat. We want it to lose heat. So this cannot be the answer. So, so 4 is the answer. Last part here. Alright. So put this bottle inside here and it will start to... Uh, what will happen if I put the bottle inside? So the bottle will gain heat. The bottle gains heat, the heat will be conducted through the bottle to the air inside. When the air inside gains heat, air expands, pushes in all directions, and that means it will push the air inside up as well, push up the balloon and inflate the balloon. So what will happen to the balloon when the bottle is placed inside? What will happen? I'm going to explain, right? So, balloon will inflate. Explain your answer. The air in the balloon gains heat and expand. What change will happen when ice cube melts? Ice cube melts? Well, ice cube is a solid, right? So it must be solid, solid. Cannot be liquid. When it melts, it becomes a liquid. Liquid. How does it melt? It has to gain heat. So one is the answer. The last part is to remind you, uh, 
very often you see a graph, right? And here that shows you a graph like this. Okay, let's say I talk about ice cube melting. Huh? Melting ice cube, right? Ice will melt at zero degrees Celsius. So along the way, as it melts, as it melts, 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 right? This ice is at zero degrees Celsius. The ice water is also at zero degrees Celsius. Only when, so when has the ice cube, when does it, how can you tell it has completely melted? Well, from here onwards. This is when it starts to increase. That means there's no more ice. Okay? If it comes to a plateau like this, it can either be two things. Either it's room temperature or it's boiling. Okay? So it's, it can either be room temperature or boiling. Eh? That's when it plateaus up. This part will always be the freezing point or the melting point. Okay? That's the revision for energy up to your lower block energy. Uh, I'm not covering any P6 energy topics here um, because P6 we just covered that recently this year on your energy conversion, forms of energy like uh, elastic potential energy, gravitational potential energy, all those. Uh, please go and read up your textbook and the worksheets. All right, you can go and have a break now uh, while you and can come back for the next series of revision. Take care.